I'm Max Sterling. Welcome to LARP Mix. You play medieval fantasy LARP, and now you're looking to move into maybe a post-apocalyptic game or a science fiction or a dystopian future or any sort of game that is not medieval fantasy. Or maybe you play post-apocalyptic and you're looking to move into medieval fantasy. Or who knows, maybe you're a cosplayer coming into LARP or you run a theater group or a haunt or something like that. Who knows? But the point is, you're going to make costumes, you're going to make kit pieces, but you're not going to use sewing. You need to find a different way to attach materials because instead of just putting two pieces of fabric together or maybe putting two pieces of leather together, now you need to put license plates to leather. You need to put fabric to steel. You need to put fabric to wood, license plates to woods, metal to fabric, all kinds of different things. Sewing. It may work in some of those cases. You may get to sew with wires or cables, but I'm gonna show you some ways to put materials together that aren't sewing. Now, there's some other videos out there about this, but basically we want to avoid using glue that's gonna come apart. We want to avoid sewing because it's time consuming and you can't sew through a license plate you know, without a lot of hard work. And I have a couple ways to show you how to attach these things together. Let me just uh, move this out of the way here. And um, we'll go ahead and see about attaching some stuff together. Here I got some leather. And let me show you how we're going to put that together. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of these options we can do instead of gluing or sewing. Now you have your old standby. And that is nuts and bolts and washers. Now there are videos on screwing stuff together. But I would like to add to that, in case it wasn't covered in other people's videos, you should consider and you should definitely use fender washers. Now what a fender washer is, is just a washer with a larger outside diameter. That way, when you are bolting or screwing stuff together, it's gonna make it a lot harder for that bolt or screw to rip out of, because it has to rip out something this size as opposed to just the head of that nut. So if you're doing fabrics or leather, you're definitely going to want to use these fender washers to prevent stuff from ripping through. And uh, I also suggest looking into acorn nuts, which are have a dome on top, or locking nuts, which will lock into place so they don't undo themselves. And I would suggest grinding things down. If you don't use an acorn nut or locking nut, grind them down so that everything is not sharp and that's not sticking out any further than it has to. You can also consider using Loctite if you're using nuts and bolts because it'll help keep it in place and make it uh, harder for it to come apart on you. Now, if you're not using nuts and bolts, which are probably the easiest way to go, then you could go old fashioned, you could use actual rivets and uh, you can buy rivets that just basically snap together uh, you just push one into the other and they basically snap into place or you tap them with a hammer and they go into place. You can make your own rivets using nails. Find a nail with a decent sized head on it and what you're going to do is cut it off about right there or however deep your uh, two items are that you're putting together are, maybe that far. Put it through the two items and then you're going to snip it and then you're going to hammer this end until it is flat like that end. Now this can be done, that's probably the most realistic uh, way to do this, but it's also going to be the most time consuming. It may also be fairly inexpensive, but like I said, it's going to be very time consuming. So what I prefer to do, rather than use these snap rivets that will come apart, waste hours upon hours hammering these things together, is to just go out and buy something that I refer to as a Chicago screw, and I think most people do, but it might be called a binding post if you wanted to look it up online. And essentially, at least to me, those look pretty darn close. Now the difference is, instead of spending hours hammering this, it's actually a screw. So it's almost like maybe a piece of body jewelry. Uh, so you have your post here, and that's the part that you'd probably have facing outward. And then you have the part that screws in, which usually has a flathead uh, screwdriver on there. And then you just put it through whatever you're putting together and just screw it together. That simple. Now they do make these with decorative patterns on the ends of them. 
So if you shop around, you can find ones with probably floral patterns and all kinds of stuff on there. So you can really make your item pop, whatever it is that you're putting together. One more thing, if you're doing say like anything with wood, or if you're doing leather, or like wood to leather or something like that, they sell these things called T-nuts. And you can see these have teeth on them, okay? And what those do is as you tighten a screw into this nut, it'll sink those teeth into whatever it is that you're going into. So these are fantastic for wood, but they'll also work on leather. And leather workers right now are probably cringing, but they will work on leather. Um, these teeth sink in and basically stop uh, the nut from backing out. So these are really good to use, like I said, on wood or leather. Probably not so much fabric. You could do it for sure, but the fabric will probably rip out. But you know, like I said, that's entirely up to you. If you did a combination of like this with a, nut, a bolt and a fender washer on the other side, so if you're doing maybe like something that was like wood leather fabric, put this on the wood side, do a fender washer on the top over the fabric, you know, you could use a combination to make it happen instead of just using like a nut and a bolt. Plus, once this is gripped in, these lie completely flat. So there's going to be almost no uh, height on this once it's in there. And one more thing that I don't know that a lot of people consider when they're attaching items are grommets. Now, this is a grommet press. If you watch me make my sheath for my sly, uh, knife that I used for Dystopia Rising, then you may have seen this. Uh, if you don't have this, they also sell a small version of it. And basically you're just gonna put the grommet in here, put the punch in and hammer it. And that'll get your grommet in. And the cool thing about grommets are that they come in a lot of different sizes. And once they're installed, they actually leave a hole so if you want to do this on fabric or leather or something, it will leave you a hole to sew la uh, laces through or leather through or whatever. Um, I also use these on one of my t-shirt uh, tunics that I made uh, just to prevent some ripping. And you know, they work great. But you know, like I said, it's entirely up to you what you want to do. These are just some ideas you can use besides sewing and gluing. I really don't like gluing things because you know it's not going to hold forever, but if you use stuff like this, it will probably hold. And also, stuff like this, especially if you're doing it on like a leather armor, is going to look a lot more genre than a bunch of hot glue seeping out the sides. Let's go ahead and see some of this stuff in action. Let's start out the grommets. So let's say I want to attach a piece of fabric to a piece of foam or something along those lines, or maybe I even want to attach the fabric around the foam, but I want to have a hole in it for some reason. Well, what we want to do is find ourselves a grommet that is uh, approximately the right depth for this, and that looks pretty good. And then we're just going to line up where we want these things to go. Maybe I'm trying to make a uh, you know tic-tac-toe or nine men's Morse board or something. We're going to go ahead and load up the grommet into the press, which is real easy. Take this part, it goes on top. And then the ring goes on the bottom. And then all you do is just take the foam and the fabric and just put it right on in. And then press down. It'll actually punch its own hole so sometimes you have to follow through with something, but there you go. Now you have fabric attached to foam. And I just want to do a quick comparison of the Chicago screw versus using a nail as a rivet. And you can see that really they pretty much look the same. This has a little bit more height to it, but pretty much the same. And you can sort of see what we're working with on the back. Now you would clip this off and hammer it down on this one you just screw it into place with your power drawer or whatever and you can see it, you basically get the same thing so that's why I prefer to use these Chicago screws even if they cost a little bit more now we want to attach our license plate to this so we're gonna go ahead and take our plate run our Chicago screw through here 
and then just screw it onto the back. And like I said, if you want to, you could use a fender washer on the back or, you know, you don't have to. And then from there, it's really just as simple as screwing it in place and you can use a hand screwdriver, you can use a power one, or you can just use your hand <laughs> if you want. And boom, this is attached. Now we got a little bit of play, so this obviously wasn't the right size, but you can buy shorter ones that would work better, but that'll attach it on there for you. And then just put three more in place and you have a license plate attached to a breastplate. Now we also talked about using these T-nuts on leather, right? And like I said, really these are much better for on wood, but we can definitely use these on leather as well. So for that, all we do is once again, make a hole in the two mediums that we're going through, or the two materials. And then we're just gonna push that T-nut through you can see there, and then we're just going to screw right into that. Now the difference is once we tighten this down, it is tightened down. And what we would do is we would continue to tighten until this sank deep into the leather and prevented it from moving at all. I'm not gonna do that because I don't want to destroy this leather, but if this was a permanent item that you were making, you would just tighten this down, like I said, until that goes into there and holds it tight. Now, if you haven't used a pop riveter before, it's pretty easy. It's a couple heads on it. Take whatever size rivet you're using, put the long end inside, okay? Just like that. Then, you're gonna take whatever it is that you're putting together. You have to make sure there's holes pre-drilled or punched in it. And you're gonna stick that right on in, okay? From there, it's just a matter of Squeezing it. There we go. I mean, pop rivets definitely have their place, but if you want to do a side by side by side, so let's try to get a close up here. That's your nail we would turn into a rivet. That's your Chicago screw. That's your pop rivet. Like I said, this looks significantly different and modern. These two I think are gonna be your winners. And then like I said, this is very time consuming. This, nice. I really hope that you found this video informative. And even if you've seen everything I showed you here today, I hope that uh, some of the tips that I gave are helpful to you, like with the fender washers and using the acorn nuts and Loctite. Uh, using the Chicago screws or just getting galvanized and stainless instead of brass or something that'll turn on you. I hope that you're able to take some sort of information away from this video that'll help you with your LARPing or your cosplay or if you do haunts or if you work on school plays or major motion pictures or interior designing or whatever it is that you're doing that requires you to put two materials together, I hope that this video was helpful for you. And like I said, you can do a combination of these. You can use uh, nuts and bolts with the T-nuts and Chicago screws with the wa fender washers and all kinds of different combinations to get the looks that you desire and the strength that you desire out of your costume. Because when I make a kit or a costume, I don't make it to last one day or one hour. I make it to last basically a lifetime and you know if I wear it once or twice I mean it is what it is but a lot of my costumes I wear over and over years on end and they get put through the paces and this is how you make something that will last hot gluing two things together is not gonna cut it you go in the desert you have a lot of body heat you're running around uh, getting hot it's not gonna hold up over time you do stuff like this it's gonna look better it's gonna be more authentic, and in some cases, it may look period, which is good. And if it doesn't look quite period enough for you, some sandpaper and a little bit of time, I'm sure that you can fix it and get it to look exactly how you want it to look. For me, 
My favorite things to work with are the Chicago screws because they're very simple. You put some Loctite on there and they look just like rivets. I like using just the uh, good old fashioned uh, nuts and bolts and fender washers for a lot of stuff, especially post-apocalyptic and grommets. Uh, grommets, I think, don't get a lot of love, but the fact that they leave a hole open in them and that you can put stuff through them, I think makes it very cool, especially if you're making sheaths and stuff like that. So I hope it's something that you consider trying. If you enjoyed this video, please click like, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and please just let everybody that you know know about my channel. And if you're in a situation in person or online in a forum or something, and something comes up and you know that I made a video on it, please throw my name out there, throw a link out there and help this channel to grow because it's really you, the viewers, that help this channel to grow and to make it you know, something just amazing. And I also have a Ko-Fi, of course, and a Patreon if you feel so inclined. Anything that you donate through there goes right back into the channel. And I have some big projects I would love to do and uh, they will happen in time. But if you would like to sponsor any of those, you can definitely check out my Ko-Fi and my Patreon there at the bottom uh, in the description of every one of my videos. And uh, of course, as always, adventure on. Yeah. Grommet Press. I wonder if I could pierce my ear with this thing. <laughs>